What is up everybody, it's Stas here and in this video I'm going to be breaking down and sharing with you all four stocks that I'm looking to swing trade heading into the month of December in 2019 and I also want to break down with you all natural gas, give you all my opinion on that because we saw a critical support break in today's session although the markets were closed, the futures markets were open so we can see the movement of that and I also want to break down you guys and DGAS very quickly Quickly to give you all my thoughts heading into tomorrow's session, which is actually a short session. The markets close, I believe, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I kind of just want to get some thoughts out to you guys in this video and let you know what I am thinking about right now. And by the way, today's Thanksgiving, so I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving out there with your families. I hope you all ate a crap ton of food. I sure did. And to be honest, guys, I'm falling asleep as I'm filming this video because I ate a tad bit too much turkey and mashed potatoes and of course gravy. So let's get this video going guys. Let's talk about this before I do fall asleep here on the mic. We'll start off here with the ES and by the way if you guys enjoyed this video hit that like consider subscribing and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as the Strive Smart Facebook group and consider checking out the Strive Smart merch site Strive Drivesmartstore.com. I'm actually running a 20% off Black Friday sale right now. That is linked down below in the comment section as well as in the description box. So let's start off right here with the ES, the E mini SP 500 index futures. So you guys can see those are currently down $3.50 right now, down 0.11%. And you guys can see yesterday we were actually at $31.55. And then the market took a drastic dump down to about 31.43. Actually, it's not too drastic, guys. It's not too crazy at all, honestly. It's about a 0.4%, 0.3% drop. And that is because if we look here, Dow Jones futures, the markets in general, fell after President Donald Trump signed into law that expresses support for Hong Kong protesters. Straining relations with a phase one China trade deal still not yet finalized. Beijing accused America of sinister intentions but hasn't taken any concrete actions. The stock market rally fueled in large part by China trade optimism, as we all know at this point, set fresh all-time highs heading into the Thanksgiving holiday. So this is something worth keeping an eye on heading into this next day of trading, which is tomorrow. And again, tomorrow's session is going to be short, closing at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. And of course, this could affect the markets heading into next week's session. So just keep an eye on that. Of course, we saw the markets take a hit in terms of the ES, and you can see since then they've slowly recovered. They're slowly filling that gap, but again, they're still down $3.50 right now. If we go to the NASDAQ, down $10.25, down about 0.12% right now, and you can see just like the S&P, it dumped after hours, but it's still filling that gap. It's still slowly filling that gap back up to that all-time high at around 84.58. And if we go to the Dow Jones futures, guys, down 44 points right now, down 0.16%. You can see the dump after hours and the slow gap fill here in today's session on this beautiful day of Thanksgiving. So that's kind of what the markets are looking like right now. Nothing crazy. You know, this little Hong Kong fiasco, it is dropping the markets a bit. Let's see if China does anything about it? Does this strain the relationship on them in terms of coming to a phase one deal or any type of major deal? It could, right? And it's worth watching over these next couple of days, like I mentioned. So let's break down natural gas now, guys, and take a look at what that did today. And in my opinion, we saw a critical support break to the downside today, which I want to go over. Slash NG F20 is what I'm looking at here in terms terms of natural gas and these are the January futures contracts. So let's take a look on this four hour chart what I'm talking about here in terms of that critical support break and I've been talking about this over the past, I believe, two, three videos in terms of natural gas, 248 is a very, very strong level of support, right? You guys can see a couple months ago, um, before that major rally in the beginning of, uh, what was it, towards the end of uh, 
August and the beginning of September. You guys can see we held 248, 249, even 250, I guess you can say, that general area um, as a support multiple different times we tested it, right? Once twice, you know, three times, four times, five, six, seven times, multiple times, we've held that level strong, and again, we've ran to the upside from there. After that sell-off in natural gas, we kind of double-bottomed again, right at that 250, 252 level, right, that general area, and then we rallied yet again. Now, we're testing it yet again, and it seems like we're not holding it as a support. You guys can see we actually got rejected by that EMA. We're not seeing a break out of the EMA, which would be quite bullish and giving us confirmation that it is, uh, you know, holding it as a support. Rather, we're seeing the dump below that level. So that's not too good, in my opinion, for the bulls out there, for the natural gas bulls, and obviously for the U gas holders, right? Eventually, I'd like to see a potential pop and then a consolidation here over the next couple of days. Maybe we get that, but in terms of a lower downside on natural gas here, the fact that we broke that 249 level, we could be seeing further downside. And honestly, guys, on this chart, NGF20, we can't really see a lower point of natural gas here, giving us kind of difficult, a uh, difficult time finding the next level of support that it could potentially test. So at this point, you know, we're getting oversold, extremely oversold at that. Um, in terms of N NG on all all the time frame. So I'd watch and see eventually, does it bottom out at 240? Does it go down at 235 maybe? That's what some people were saying, you know, in, in the community, in the Discord chat, you know, even in the comments on YouTube, people were saying maybe 235 could be the bottom. You just have to watch it here in the short term. And of course, natural gas reports, which I went over in yesterday's video, and I'll link that down below if you guys want to see more in-depth value and really, you know, research on that report. These are the things that are going to fluctuate the price of NG, right? So in the short term, we know, and I went deeper into this in yesterday's video, in the short term, it's going to be warmer, more mild in terms of the weather than we typically expect, which is why we're seeing a really a withdrawal that's smaller than expected in the natural gas inventory and these warmer weathers, which is why we're seeing the lower price in natural gas because there's not as much demand as at this moment in time but my theory is in the next couple of weeks we'll start to see that demand as we get colder weather across the country so how does this equate over to you gas and d gas pulling up d gas's chart guys if this gap down holds in terms of natural gas let's say we run down even lower to the 240s d gas i think is going to be a great play in tomorrow's session and honestly in the short term again like i've been saying over these past couple of videos i think D gas is going to be the winner in terms of U gas and D gas, right? So expect D gas, not really saying expected to, but keep an eye out for it to potentially go back up into the 140s, maybe 145, maybe 150, guys, right? That's kind of where I'm seeing a strong resistance level on um, D gas. That's where we triple topped a couple weeks ago. So that could be where the rally ends before we see the rally in. You guys, right? So going over to you guys, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, and, and they've been buying up the dip and telling me in the comments section in terms of you guys expecting this thing to reverse, right? So that is something that, again, I think could happen here in the next three to four weeks. But in the short term, in this time where we're not getting as much demand for natural gas, we may still see some downside in you gas. So maybe keep an eye out for the $10 level, um, lower $11 level, that's where we could be headed um, here in the short term in the next one to two weeks. But again, after that, I think we could go much higher. So that's kind of the breakdown um, in terms of what happened with natural gas today. And if you guys, again, want to see a further breakdown of the natural gas report, I'll leave that linked down below in the description box. It's yesterday's video. I highly recommend you go check that out. So let's talk about four stuff 
stocks that I'm looking to swing trade before I let you guys go. And I'm actually swing trading how many of these right now? I believe I'm in one of these as of right now. And I'm looking to buy the other three over these next couple of days slash weeks if they get to the right levels that I want them to get to. So the first one that I want to talk about here is going to be PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. And let me pull this one up for you guys. And if you remember, I was actually in PayPal um, about 10 days ago. I was buying in the 102 level and then all of a sudden PayPal dumped after they uh, acquired a $4 billion um, acquisition. I forget what the company's name was. I think it was like Honey something. Anyway, they acquired this company for $4 billion and then the stock dumped, right? It dumped. I ended up cutting my losses. Actually, not cutting my losses, breaking even, maybe cutting a little bit of losses, you know, right around the 102 level, literally right before it took off. So I actually cut losses, you know, broke even at a very bad time, but hey, that happens, right? That happens. It ended up taking off. Now I'm looking to enter into it again, guys, because if we're looking on this four hour chart, this thing is looking like it's breaking out to the sky, right? We, we're breaking above moving average resistance levels, the 180 and the 50 SMA. Now it seems like we're testing 107 or 108 roughly, which is where we got to after the earnings report before dumping back down to about a hundred bucks. So I think here, guys, um, if PayPal breaks above 108, I think this thing can definitely run up to 112 bucks. I see that window of opportunity looking very juicy, to be honest, right? And if we pull up this other tool, we can see from 108 up to 112, that's around a 3.5 to 4% profit potential on PayPal. And of course, I think it could run even higher, right? And, and, and especially because they had an, a fantastic earnings report. They beat on EPS and revenue, right? So I believe this thing could run even higher if it breaks 111 bucks. And we can see some levels it could get to, maybe 116 bucks, right? And from 111 to 116, that's another 4% percent, right? So from 108 to 116, that's around a 7, 8% profit. So PayPal, PYPL, I'm really liking this one right now. The next one is another one, guys, um, that I ended up getting out of and kind of breaking even on, and that's McDonald's, MCD. I was in this one about 10 days ago, um, 10, 14 days ago is when I started buying in, in the 192 level, and then all of a sudden, guys, we started to break down words, lower lows, lower highs, as you guys can see on this hourly chart. Ended up getting out um, of this position just to play it safe, then all of a sudden, boom, there it goes, up 3%. Now it's in um, the 196s. This is looking like a bull flag to me. We could be moving even higher from here. But before I get into this stock again, before I allocate capital to it again in my account, what do I want to see now to not get kind of faked out? again. I want to see a break above 198. 198, if you guys can see based on this trend line, that's a level of resistance from back in the end of April. It was a level of resistance back towards the end of October and really all across the month of November up until now. So if we break 198 and ultimately that 180 SMA on the four hour chart and we get into 200 bucks, that's where I'm looking to get into McDonald's. And honestly, that's a safer entry in my opinion because if you get in here you're still facing the risk of getting rejected by either the 198 level or that 180 SMA and me personally I'd feel more comfortable at least scaling in once we break out right so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now on McDonald's and I'm liking it a lot due to the bullish move we saw on Friday hoping this could continue or not Friday guys Wednesday hoping it, it can continue into tomorrow session and into next week's and hopefully if that happens that's when I'll enter into the position so Home Depot is the next one and this is actually one that I started buying in yesterday's se uh, session pre-market hours and this is one that if we pull up the year chart this spot we're currently at is a healthy retracement zone for uh, Home Depot right based on this uh, chart you can see over the past year each pull down that we've had each retracement that we've had 
Fed has held a higher low on this trend line as well as on top of the moving averages, right? We held the 180 SMA a couple months ago once, again a couple months ago twice, and now we're holding it yet again and we're slowly starting to climb back up. So why did Home Depot get crushed in terms of their price? Well, we go to this five-day, five-minute chart. We can see actually the 10-day chart, or let's just go to the 20-day chart. You guys can see they reported earnings. The stock went from 240 down to 216. I believe they missed drastically on revenue. Did they miss on EPS too? They might have missed on EPS as well. Let me actually look here to make sure I'm correct. I think, yeah, they missed on EPS, but the thing is that dragged the stock down was their guidance, guys. They slashed guidance, I believe, and that, if any stock does that, or any company rather does that, their stock a lot of the time is going to take a hit. But people that are contrarians out there, they view this as a good time to get in, and that's kind of what I'm viewing it as because Home Depot, Blue Chip Company, we saw the technicals, they recover pretty much every time after a dip, I think it's worth watching at this point. So Home Depot earnings report was meh, but still it's worth watching here on the dip as it's already recovering. So the last one that I want to talk about today, guys, is going to be at V ticker symbol ATVI. And this is one that's been hovering in this horizontal channel here. It feels like forever at this point, right? Let me pull up my 90 day chart. You guys will be able to see it. It's been between 52 bucks and around 57.50 ever since the beginning of September. Really for the past um, three months at this point, it's been bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And just recently, guys, after the earnings report, stock dumped, held 51 yet again, and it's been climbing up from then. Um, since then, breaking above moving averages, now we're breaking that 180 SMA, which is looking quite good. So I'm looking to enter at V at around 55 bucks. And if we break 56, 57 guys, and this is where I see a lot of potential in ATV, this thing could really be going up to 60 bucks per share because if we pull out the one year, one day chart, you guys can see 57 bucks, the next level of resistance is around 63 bucks. So that gives this thing upwards of 11% profit from the 56, $57 resistance break up to that next resistance, which again is at $62.75. So I really like this one, guys. Um, the, the reversal on it is quite beautiful, I think. You know, we found a bottom at 40 bucks. We've been breaking resistances um, really every couple weeks, every couple months. It seems like this thing keeps going higher. So I think it's worth watching here over the next couple of uh, weeks, definitely heading into this month of December and heading into the, their next earnings report, quite honestly, because call of Duty, I think those numbers could definitely end up pushing the stock up here in the next couple of weeks as they do report their next round of earnings. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below in the comments what you thought about it, what stocks are you watching, and what ETFs are you watching? What are your thoughts on the market? I'd love to know. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to go down below as well to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and if you want to be a further part of the strive smart community the discord links down below the facebook group link is down below and again i'm running a 20 percent off black friday sale on the strive smart merch which is also linked down below so i'll catch you all in the next video Thanks again for watching. I hope you all had a fantastic day today. Fantastic Thanksgiving day. Peace out.